Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're taking a closer look at the temptations that people have to see if we can figure out why we're tempted to commit sins. People generally commit sins because they're after something they want and they sin in an attempt to get it. So we're looking over the things people want. Today, satisfaction. Again, let's look at some of the definitions of this word to see what's meant by it. Here, three definitions stick out as something people can be tempted by. Definition 2a, fulfillment of a need or want. Definition 2b, the quality or state of being satisfied, contentment. Definition 2c, a source or means of enjoyment, gratification. So, the fulfillment of some need or desire which leads to contentment in an enjoyable way would be the ultimate kind of satisfaction, according to these. Everyone wants to be satisfied. Nobody wants to be only partially contented or not contented at all. However, the reality is that very few people experience much contentedness. Because of this, the principal danger with the obsession with satisfaction lies in believing that something will satisfy you when it really won't and acting on the basis of that belief. In short, warping your obsession with satisfaction into an obsession with something else. The reason why this is the greatest danger of satisfaction is that, if we're being totally honest, there isn't much in life that gives real, lasting satisfaction, and therefore an obsession with satisfaction can only be used to tempt us into sin if we make a mistake about what kinds of things will satisfy us. For example, Bob would like to have money, but his real obsession is with satisfaction. If he knows that money can't fully satisfy him, his desire for money remains just that, a passing desire which won't tempt him into breaking into the safe in his neighbor's house or trying to rob the local delicatessen. On the other hand, if Bob genuinely believes that having enough money will satisfy him, he might be willing to rob, cheat, lie, swindle, work for unscrupulous people, and so on, just to get more of it. It's only when we draw a false connection between satisfaction and other desires that satisfaction itself becomes hazardous to us. You see, there is one, and only one, genuine source of satisfaction, one place where each of us was meant to draw satisfaction from. Like all good things, God is the ultimate source of contentment, and anyone who has contentment got it from Him, whether they know it or not. Because of this, those who are closest to God are also the most contented, and no one can be closer to God than a saint in heaven. The saints in heaven experience satisfaction, and not of just one type, but of every type, because God is the source of all of them. So an eagerness for satisfaction, poorly understood, can lead people to make mistakes about what satisfaction involves, and therefore lead them into sin. However, an eagerness for satisfaction, properly understood, can lead people closer to God by reminding them of where all satisfaction ultimately comes from and what they need to do to acquire it in its true fullness, reach eternal life. Next time, why should we believe that God is the source of all of these good things? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.